Young Eugene. Good evening. I hope everyone is enjoying the whole event. Um, before I start, I would like to thank Zikri with Zikri. Oh, Zikri and the whole excitement team for inviting me to share my story. Um, a lot of you who don't know, we actually have a national ice hockey team in Malaysia. Yeah! Right? So Zikri was part of it. Yes! Ago. Thank you! Thank <laughs> you! Right? Um, yeah, this is... I'm also the coach for the Malaysia Ice Hockey Federation. Woo! Woo! Coaching the youth. Well, this is inline hockey, not ice, but similar. So... Open this one. Okay, just a little bit something about me. I've been playing for 14 years coaching for 7 years, I've made the men's national team in 2008, I gave up my full time job to work with the federation in 2015 and I'm also an international certified coaching instructor and official. Yes. Any, any of you know? Yes. The Trina yes. 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 Some of you may not but, so this, when I was young, when I was a kid, this is what, like I would watch this a million times. A million times because this is how it all started. So I'm just going to share a little bit on the blood sweat of success, how it all started to where I am now, right? So um, back then when I was a kid, parents will always ask me, "Oh, what do you want to be when you grow up? Doctor, engineer, Chinese, dance." <laughs> <laughs> so of course, being, being young, if you ask a kid. It's not wrong, but you know what do you want to be when you grow up? What do you want to be in the next 50, 60, 70 years? Honestly, as a kid, you would give an answer, but as time passed, do you really want that? You don't know. So, what made me to what I am today? I just simplified it into five. Number one, sacrifice. When I was a kid, I used to rollerblade because back then, extreme sport was the in thing. Like next game, rollerblading. Um, skateboard. So I used to rollerblade and I told my mom, I asked my mom, Ma, I want to buy a pair of rollerblades. So my mom said, Yes, you can, but here's your two ringgit for your school lunch. So that's the only money you have. So after two months of collecting money, saving up, yes, I went to a toy department store, I bought an 80 ringgit rollerblade, which lasts me one day. <laughs> that's it. <laughs> right? Because me and my friends, we used to go to um, school after school and just rollerblade around school so I used to borrow his rollerblade so his was the high-end expensive one so I only managed to get the 80 ringgit one so it lasted me a day after a few drops so that one okay fine um, then I took up bowling it was a family event so every weekend we would go to Sunway and bowl and there was ice cream there when I saw people skating I said wow coming from rollerblade Watching Mighty Ducks, I want to get to ice skating. So I told my mom, okay, you know what? I'm going to slow down the bowling. I will have to rack up and save more money to buy my own pair of skates. But before that, or throughout that process, I had to use rental skates. And my mom used to nyan 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 me. Because what I do, Friday after school, kids, if there's any kids here, don't do this. Unless your mom is okay with it. Right after school on Friday, I go back, I drop my school bag straight to Sunway, until 10 p.m. That's what I did every Friday throughout the journey of me learning how to skate. So, after that, it add on to Saturday, 10 to 10, non-stop. It was 10 o'clock in the morning when it opened, I was there until 10 o'clock at night. So of course my parents was always being naggy to me. Oh, why are you doing this? Why are you out of the house the whole day? What are you doing? What are you mixing with? I told my mom, well, I'm skating, if, there's, if, if you need to find me, you know where to find me. I'm not out running around, hanging out with people that you don't know. So, my mom was okay with it. And then, throughout then, you just continue skating, learning how to skate. It took me about 4 years of these 2 days, 4 years journey, to actually get, okay, now I'm so comfortable with my skates. As I moved on, and then got into secondary school, PMR, SPM, I had to slow down, got into college, that's where things came into play. 
after college, I graduated, I got a job, and that's where I also sort of made the national team. And this is where now I have to sacrifice my time and balance in my job and hockey, because end of the day, hockey is just a sport, right? Hockey may just be a sport, whereas my job could be my career. So my mom is, oh, come on, you have to be deciding on what you want to do because late at night you are out training, early morning before work, you're training. So can you imagine I had to wake up at 5 o'clock in the morning to go for training at 6 o'clock for one hour, finish, shower, straight to work. And my mom had to send me back and forth. So there was a lot of sacrifice in time. Definitely my parents' time. And then every Monday night in Sunway, there will be expats playing hockey. A friendly match within there. That's how I really got into my first hockey experience. So I spoke to one of... Uh, uh, there were also local players there at the time. I asked him. I was putting on my equipment. I put on my jersey. And my jersey got stuck because my first time. I didn't know how to put it on. I asked him, Bro, can you help me to... Put my jersey in the back, it's stuck. He looked me in the eyes and he said, If you don't know how to put on your jersey, don't play hockey. Mm. I said, Whoa. Whoa. You know what I mean? I'm the first time joining hockey, I want to experience hockey. And he looked me in and told me that if you don't know how to put on your jersey, don't play hockey. From that on, I said, Wow, this one is like a knife. Huh? Mm. <laughs> <laughs> so, but I did not give up. So I told myself, You know what? This guy, hockey, right? Oh, I don't know, put on the jersey, don't play hockey. Treating a new guy. So I told myself, you know what? I'm going to be the best at this sport. I don't care how long it's going to take, but I will make myself the very best that I can in this sport. So with hard work, like I said just now, waking up at 5 o'clock in the morning, training at 6 o'clock, straight to work, after work, training at 11 p.m. because we cannot use the ice during its... Um, what do you call this? Uh, public hours. So I have to train late night, early morning. I think some of you parents may, may know that as well back then. So, a lot of hard work. I'm going to show you something. This is me. Is he injured? So, besides that, okay, let's take you with this slide. I'm not so fun. <laughs> okay, so now, during that time, when I made the national team, we went for tournament abroad. It was in 2008. That was my first time representing Malaysia. I was like, wow. Who would have thought playing ice hockey? Number one, it's in Malaysia. Number two, I'm playing for my country in this sport. So, okay, you know what? This actually fueled me more to work harder. Second year, it happened. 2010, I. This is where my parents hated me. What I did, I told my mom and dad, Papa, I'm going to quit my job and I'm going to live in Canada for six months. <laughs> yes, I told my dad, parents, <laughs> probably, <laughs> right? So I told my mom and dad, my mom and dad just went speechless, like, you're going to quit your job and go to Canada to play hockey. Yeah. What was the day job? Okay, um, I, work, I come from an IT background, right? So, again, any parents, you say, I'm going to quit my job and go play sports at that age. Do you, have, you, do you actually take a medicine or what? Chinese, right? <laughs> uh, maybe some Chinese medicine. <laughs> so I told my dad, you know what? I made up my mind. I'm going to go to Canada. For six months, not working, full on 24 hours 7 hockey. So that's what I did. From my savings, a bit of my and pa help, finally they agreed to it. So I quit my job, I flew to Canada. And the reason why I made that decision is because in 2011, we were told that the what? The Asian Winter Game is coming up, which is a huge event. Asian Winter Game. This is where all the big countries will be there. So I told myself, you know what? I've already spent so much hours skating, 
putting in effort to play hockey, I'm not going to stop here. So I told my dad, this is the goal, you like it or not, I'm sorry, but I'm going. So I did, I did that. Six months in Canada, came back, um, it was in 2011, I went for Asian Winter Game, that was my first Asian Winter Game. And it was just amazing, it was just amazing entering the stadium, having lunch next to some superstars, other athletes, national athletes, right? So that was the race I took. I told my mom and dad, I'm going to quit my job and I'm going to go to Canada. Once I came back here, I had to find a job again. I was mom and dad, what are you going to do with your life now? Hockey is done. Where are you going to get your income from? Who's going to feed you? I had to look for a job. Found a job. Anyone from Sunway University here? No. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. the part, yeah. <laughs> so, I found a job in Sunway Uni as one of the uh, IT guys there. So happened. Remember the picture you saw just now with me? Okay, crutches? Right after the first week I started my job, I had an injury which needed surgery. So, I said, how long? I quit my job, I went to Canada, I spent money, I come back, mom and dad said, you have to look for a job, you have to look for income. Okay, I found a job. Well done. I'm down with injury. Now, how am I going to tell my boss? Or what am I going to tell my boss? Boss, I won't be able to work for six months. Is it possible to keep me in the company? So, no. pay leave lah. Right? Well, of course, I didn't go and my, I, I didn't work my boss and say that. So, finally, I got up to my boss. I said, you know what? Um, this is how it's going to go. I have due to the injury, which I really am frustrated, but I would love to keep the job. So he allowed me some time off to do my rehab. So, six months rehab. Six months of rehab that I have to go through. Because why? I want to play the sports back. Because I told myself, you know what, I'm not going to give up with this injury and continue with my life because hockey is my passion. Hockey has made me to what I am today. Hard work, sacrifice, and of course you, you need you need a goal and a dream. And like I like the shirt by the way, the T A equal J S. Right? T minus A equals J S. So that was my dream. Because when the first guy who told me if you don't know how to put on your jersey, don't play hockey. So my first step was you know what? I'm gonna be the best at this. That's what happened. And then it just led on to, you know being into Asian Winter Games, etc. So, what I can say again, Asian Winter being injured, yeah, I had to go through surgery, which was really tough. Especially recovery. Recovery was really, really tough. I had to stay one year out. One year out of hockey. My parents are like, yeah, it's one year out of hockey, but to me, one year out of hockey is actually, it's like my life has just crumbled. Right? So, how did hockey play a big part in my life and also inspired me? When I was in school, I was not a bad athlete. Lah, huh? I used to do high jump, long jump, uh, track and field. But these three sports is not the one that you see in the field. This is where I jump over fences. Right? I jump over fences as in like, one thing. Oh. I jump over fences. Oh, long jump. Okay, long jump. Teacher coming, we run. That's that's my main three sports in school. But please, please don't, don't learn from that, yeah. So I was a rebellious kid back then. And when I started taking hockey, it taught me leadership, it taught me discipline, work ethic. This is to anyone out there, if you think that you cannot be successful, no, I have never thought that I would be teaching hockey, living my life 24-7 based on hockey, because people ask you, <coughs> you coach hockey, feel hockey? No, ice hockey. Is there ice in Malaysia? <laughs> <laughs> no one knows. In Canada? Oh, so you guys play hockey. You also live in trees? Wow. <laughs> I mean, but that's how it is, right? So, talent can only bring you this far, but you have to put it in work ethic. You have, you must put in work ethic. Right? Believe in yourself. When people say, oh, are you sure this can create something that you want? Well, if you believe in it, if you 
take the risk, why don't you try? If it works, it works. If it doesn't work, you try again. Figure out something else, right? And this is my own life philosophy. You are as strong as you think you are. Well, if I'm going to go against, for example, uh, that swimming, schooling guy. Well, yes, everyone knows he's going to beat me. But is it wrong if I try my best? Because anything can happen. Anything can happen. So believe in yourself and always tell yourself you are as strong as you are. Before coming up this stage, I actually spoke to Zikri. What, Zikri? You sent me in this invitation. Huh? I don't think so I can do it. I've never done this before. I've never actually stood up stage sharing all this because I've never done it in simple words, right? So he told me, ah, don't worry, it's okay, don't worry, it's okay. Then I looked at myself, look in the mirror and said, you know what? What is wrong? What is wrong? If I can inspire myself through sports, maybe I can inspire someone here. Not via sports, but maybe some points from my slide, right? And most important, what keeps me going? Why am I still doing what I'm doing today? Besides my parents asking me, oh, are you going to get a real job? <laughs> right? What? Am I, am I, am I, okay, I don't know if you see it on Facebook, there's this meme where a couple, the guy will be like thinking, oh, I hike mountain, I have this dream. I do this, I do this, and the girlfriend will be like, wow, so ambitious. Life before 30. Life after 30, same thoughts. This guy doesn't have a real job. <laughs> so, this is what I have to go through as well. You know? It's like hockey in Malaysia, you're making a living through hockey. Is that going to work here? Because there's only two ice rings in Malaysia, by the way. Third one's coming up. And there has not been any sort of record, track record of Malaysia becoming big in hockey. But you know what I said? Because of passion, because of dedication, and what sport made me today, I want to give back to the community via sports. Woo! Right? So that is what keeps me going. And what kept me going? Just to share a few, um, few pictures. These are the teams that I'm coaching. These are between 8 to 13 years old kids. So yeah, this is part of our program, hockey school. By the way, this kid is here. He's right there. Riyas, if you can say hello. And, and, and he knows, he knows when I coach, I coach, I'm not what I do at home. When I coach, I'm a different person because again, discipline. He's very strict. Yes. <laughs> right? So but you need to be. Yeah, so it's it's End of the day, it's, it's not just hockey I'm teaching. I'm teaching life skills, right? Discipline, the stuff that you're going to need, not in your sports, but in your life. What are you going to do when you grow up? Oh, I can't. I, I can't do this because I don't have this skill. Well, if you're hardworking, if you have a dream, put in the effort. There you go. That's the goal right there, right? This is the second team I'm coaching. This is a bit um, older. This is between 12 to 16. And some of them will be playing for the... Some of them are actually playing for the national team as well. Right? Um, finally, what defines success to me as an athlete or as a person or as a coach is not, oh, I made the national team? Yes, checklist done. That's one of my goal. What is success? Am I making millions every year out of hockey? No, I'm not. Right? Because this sport is so small, barely no one knows about it. Oh These few kids here, I've coached them since 8 years old. Some of them are 16, 17, and they are playing in the national team with me. So, to me, this is a life experience to me. I get to watch someone from the age of 8 grow up every year and finally share the same jersey. So this is what keeps me going, right? Um, yeah, I think that's about it. Um, if any of you are interested in hockey, you can look up for me. Um, you can add me on Facebook. It's Yap Eugene. And yeah, that's it. Thank you.